Hey guys, today we're going over some of the most important derivative skills you can ever have. So this first question is the derivative of y equals 1 over x plus 1. Now you could actually do this problem using the quotient rule, um, but, but if the numerator is a 1, there's a short trick you can use, and I'll show you right now. Uh, so we can rewrite it like this, y equals... Now we'll bring x plus 1 to the numerator. x plus 1, and then it gets a negative 1 exponent. Hopefully you've learned how to do this in your algebra classes, but when there's a 1 in the numerator, even if it was a 2, you could bring this to the top, and then you multiply it by the numerator, so then you still have a 1 here. Since it's a 1, you can pretty much ignore it. Now for the derivative dy dx is equal to, so now you just do your product rule, negative 1, inside stays the same, or this is actually the chain rule, not the product rule, sorry, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent, minus 2, and then times the derivative of the inside, what's the, the derivative of this? Derivative of x is just 1. Derivative of 1 is 0. So you end up with this. And uh, you can simplify it to make it look nicer. And the way to do that is get rid of your negative exponent. So you just drop this down here. x plus 1, and that's squared. And that is your answer here. Up next, we have a pretty similar question. Um, the only difference is it's a square root instead of just a, blank, a plain x plus 1. So we'll start off the same way by rewriting our question. Now, since we have a 1 in the numerator, we know that we're able to bring the denominator to the top using a negative exponent. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, but I'll just show this in a couple steps, actually. So. We'll start by re rewriting the denominator. So instead of square root of x plus 1, we can rewrite it as x plus 1 to the 1 half. Okay. And then now we can bring this, let's a large y, trace that. Now we can start by bringing this denominator to the top here. So now let's bring that to the top. Using the same skill we learned in the first problem. x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. And then this is a much more familiar problem. Now we can do the chain rule on it. And I made a mistake. This negative shouldn't be there. Okay. So this is uh, really familiar. We can work with this. Now we actually take the derivative. So everything up until now has been algebra manipulation. Nothing has been calculus yet. Now this is calculus, so we're going to multiply by the exponent to negative one half times the derivative of the inside. Oh, sorry, just times the inside as it is, and then you subtract negative one from the exponent. So um, negative one half minus one is going to be negative three halves. Okay, and this is this is your answer, but we can simplify it, so we will dy dx equal to negative 1 on top, 2 at the bottom, x plus 1 to the 3 halves. And that's our answer. And uh, my handwriting is sloppy, but this is a plus. And this 3 half is to the exponent. So hopefully those two concepts are making sense to you. Another really important derivative concept is to be able to apply your knowledge of derivatives into real life situations. Um, especially like volume. You're going to get into a lot of like geometric type questions in calculus and calculus and derivatives too. And so it's good to get familiar with different notation other than just dy dx. So we're given a volume denoted as v equals four-thirds 
ir cube. And it's asking us to find the derivative dr with the dv with respect to dr. So in other words, how is the volume changing with respect to the radius? This is actually a pretty simple derivative if you understand what to do. The hard part is, you know, a lot of people don't know what to do, and that's why I struggle with this. So 4 thirds pi are just consonants, so we can ignore them for now. Now we just need the derivative of r3. That's really the only thing you take the derivative of is r3, and so the derivative of r3 is going to be 3r squared. Simple product rule. Let's go ahead and write that down, 3r squared. And then it just so happened that these threes cancel nicely. And then we end up with the derivative of volume with respect to radius is equal to 4 pi r squared. That's the final answer. Oh, that should have been a highlight. Last problem. This is probably the trickiest one in the out of the four. So y equals two to the x. So this one's really tricky because normally when you're taking a derivative with an exponent, you just use the product rule and multiply by the exponent and then subtract the exponent by one. But we can't do that in this because we have a variable in the exponent. And so it's really like a clever trick that you have to learn instead. And the clever trick is this. We're going to use an e, multiply that to the natural log degree, 2 times x. So basically what happens is we turn this 2x into a, a function of natural log, and then multiply it all in the exponent to e. And that's just a manipulation we can do because e to the natural log cancels itself out. So we, we haven't done anything to this problem. These two, these two terms are exactly the same. They're identical. Identical terms. Okay, so now we can actually start doing calculus. So we're going to start the derivative dy dx. Now this is a chain rule problem. So the derivative of e to the anything is itself, right? e doesn't change with its derivative. So I'm just going to rewrite this. e to the ln 2x times, now we do the derivative of the inside, so the screen square here. What's the derivative of that? Well, natural log of 2 is just a constant, or just a constant, sorry, just a constant times x, which means that the derivative of the constant times x is just a constant, so times ln of 2. Okay, so now we've actually taken the derivative. Now, this is, this is the answer here. This is correct. If you were to turn this in on your test, this would be correct. However, we can still simplify. And the way to simplify is if you notice, these two are the same. And we have an e to the ln times 2x, which means that we can rewrite this as 2x. Right now, that's the same as 2x times ln times 2. So that's actually the answer here. dx equal to 2x times natural log of 2. Um, and just in case you were wondering, if you were to substitute this 2 with a 3, the answer would still be true here. You just need to substitute 3 and for 2. And same with 4, same with 5. Works for any number.